Hey everybody, John Gucci Foley and back with the High Performance Zone. Today, trust is the glue to life. And what I want to do is I want to dive into why I think trust is also the key to execution. In fact, we're going to dive into what I call the three C's of trust, which is the competency, the commitment and consistency. What does it feel like to fly 18 inches from another jet at 500 miles per hour. You know, you got to be competent, of course. You also have to be committed to the results, but it's that consistency, showing up with your A game every single day. And how do you translate that back into every aspect of your life? Relationships, both at work and at home, developing what I call verbal and nonverbal agreements or contracts that allow you to increase trust rapidly. So this chapter is powerful. I'm going to read it to you. And then don't forget, this is part of our brand new release of the audio book. Uh, we got extra content here. So go to johnfoleyinc.com backslash audiobook. Make sure you get on the pre-release here because there is some special content there. Okay, let's dive into today's chapter about high trust and how these contracts can lead to high execution. Gucci, glad to be here. Ready, hit it. Chapter six, high trust, the key to execution. Trust is the glue of life. It's the foundational principle that holds all relationships. Stephen R. Covey. In pursuit of elite execution, you have a full quiver of arrows from which to pull. But I often ask leaders, if you only had one arrow, which would you pick? What would your primary focus be? Which tool would you choose to achieve that goal of increased execution? In my experience as a member of multiple elite teams and in working with hundreds of organizations around the world, I choose trust. I believe that if you increase trust, execution will follow. The Blue Angels are one of the greatest living examples of how trust enables elite execution. Up in the sky, in tight formation, we're holding the life of every teammate in the stick between our legs. The air show is built on countless moments where small mistakes have big consequences. In order to survive, we need to execute with precision and we have to trust on our lives that our teammates will do the same. I believe if you increase trust, execution will follow. In the realm of business and high-performance teams, as well as in life and relationships, trust is one of the most important variables, if not the one irreplaceable component for reaching greater success. Trust is fundamental and remains one of the critical differentiators in all aspects of life. This is because trust is an essential element in every single group effort on this planet. You don't have to be a member of an elite team to see how trust affects you. Even in everyday life, the stakes are high. Trust underlines many of the basic things we take for granted in society. We wouldn't even be able to go to a doctor if we didn't trust that they were qualified and skilled. We wouldn't be able to drive on a two-lane road without trusting that both parties will stay in their lanes. This unspoken agreement between two drivers is the same kind of nonverbal contract that Thumper and I use to execute a knife-edge pass. We both trusted that the other would stay on time and on flight line. And I can tell you one thing. When you're hurling toward another jet at a thousand miles per hour closure, set to cross within a wingspan, you need to trust that person in the other jet. Trust gives us clarity of mind that allows us to focus our energy. High trust is one of the foundational elements of the Blue Angel culture. It gives us a clarity of mind that allows us to focus our energy on performing at the highest level possible. It allows us to fly closer together and lower to the ground than any other team in the world, safely. It allows us to accelerate and push boundaries that we wouldn't normally be able to push. High trust is the medium in which all of our daily interactions take place. It is something we work on constantly. We have to actively earn that trust every day. And it took form in what I like to call high trust contracts. High trust contracts are the foundation for communication in high performing teams. It can be easier to trust in a safe and functional environment, but when things are not right, communication is critical. You need to be aware of what the problems are, especially when things are off. 
When everything is going right while flying a knife edge pass, the pilot's radios are mostly silent. But when things are off, communication becomes extremely important. As we're getting into position for the maneuver, my wingman and I have to perfectly nail the solo timing pattern. Then to start the maneuver, I come up on the radio and ask my wingman one simple question. Are you ready to take a mark? At this point, we're six miles apart, well outside of visual range. What I'm asking with that question is, are you in position and are you ready to go? The contract we had was that he could say no if he wasn't ready. 99 out of 100 times, Thumper was ready. But when he wasn't, I really needed to know. Once he responds, ready to take a mark, I call on the radio, stand by, mark it, and we hit our stopwatches. From that moment, we both have 20 seconds to reach our three-mile checkpoint on altitude, on airspeed, and on time. If he is at his three-mile checkpoint on time, he tells me nothing because the contract we have is, if you're on, you don't need to say anything. On a side note, this contract can also decrease your voicemail and email. If he's even one second off, he's late. I need to know that because it's the leader who has to correct. My contract to him was, I'll be on the flight line. I'll set the altitude and I'll make the timing correction. As my wingman, he has only one job, miss me. It was like the biggest game of chicken you ever played, but it was different because we had discipline and contracts. This is just one example of the high trust contracts we used for precise execution. The three C's of trust. Before we examine the points where trust is formed, it's important to understand what makes someone trustworthy. When I'm trying to paint a picture of high trust, I often think back to the Blue Angel maintenance crew. When I joined the team, it was the first time I didn't do my own pre-flight checks of the airplane. Each day I came out of the brief and marched to my jet with the other pilots. My crew chief would be waiting beside the aircraft. He would salute me, shake my hand and say, sir, the jet is ready to go. He didn't give me a long litany of the things they had done or the challenges they had encountered. Because of the trust between us, the simple statement stood in for all of that. After we shook hands, I'd climb in the cockpit, look down, and see my flight gloves on the right console in exactly the same position every day, left over right. I would scan the cockpit to quickly ensure that all the switches on the F-18 were exactly the correct position. The radio was set not only to the correct frequency, but also to the volume that I preferred. When the crew chief was preparing the jet, I knew he had gotten down on his hands and knees and counted the rivets on the ejection seat to make sure the rudder pedals and the seat were in the exact position I liked. These details were important, but it was more than that. The maintenance crew had been out there long before us, starting the engine, those morning turns. This involves warming up every system on the airplane, the hydraulics, the electrical, the flight controls. Every control surface was tested before I even approached the airplane. Any discrepancies were identified and corrected well before I had even arrived at the airfield. I didn't ask for any of that. The maintenance team and the crew chiefs always went above and beyond. Does your team do that? What would it look like if they did? In any other squadron, I'd been out there long before takeoff doing the pre-flight myself. But on the Blue Angels, we changed this. We empowered and trusted our crew chiefs to do it for us. That required extra training, but in the end created greater efficiency for the entire organization. To trust someone on this level meant that your life depended on them doing their job. But the differentiator was that everybody went above and beyond. It wasn't just my crew chiefs, Joe and Pete. It was every crew chief on every airplane. The maintenance department created the processes, but the whatever-it-takes culture and the commitment of every team member was something that existed throughout the entire organization. All of this was achieved with high trust contracts. This gave me the opportunity to be even more effective during the flight because it was one less task I had to worry about. As I reflect back on those relationships, I ask myself why I trusted those around me so deeply. How were we all able to trust at this level? What were our crew chiefs doing that was different? When I break it down, I believe there are three main components that underline these trust contracts. I call them the three C's of high trust. Number one, competence. 
The root of this concept is basic. Are you trained and do you have the necessary skills? Are you capable of doing the job that you've been assigned? Do you have the character necessary to do the right thing even when no one is watching? Your character is defined by all the actions you take, and competencies are continually built throughout a career. You attend schools and receive training, but at the end of the day, you need experience. Experience matters. The good news is that competency can be determined very quickly. We do this all the time, not only when you're hiring, but also when you're assigning people to certain roles. To trust in their success, you need to know that they possess the skills, training, and experience to execute on those roles, and eventually to master them. Competency is the easiest element of high trust, both to identify and to achieve. Number two, commitment. When identifying this element, you're talking about more than basic commitment to your role. For high trust, you have to know that everybody is all in that they're executing with 100% engagement. Commitment means being that person that everyone can count on, the one who's called upon when the most challenging situations arise, and the one who is looking out for others. On the Blues, this was a prerequisite for every member. All the Blue Angels are the embodiment of deep commitment. We all traveled on the road and spent 270 days a year away from home. For everyone, the team came first in our lives before birthdays, holidays, or anniversaries. Families have to buy into it too, and at times that can really be hard. Flying with the team wasn't a nine to five job. It was a full-time commitment to a higher purpose, to a purpose larger than self. When mission comes over self, high trust becomes possible. Number three, consistency. This is the differentiator that separates the elite from others and allows for sustained high performance. It allows you to build on your performance every day. Consistency creates predictability. Do you bring your A-game to work every day? Are you consistent in both actions and reactions? How someone reacts under pressure is critical. Some people are calm under pressure, and others aren't. It's important to know how someone reacts, not just when things are going well, but when you hit turbulence, not only in business, but in life. This becomes apparent as you work alongside someone. You have to quickly determine that they're dependable and consistent. Having both is what allows us to fly in tight formation because we knew how people would respond. When we're in the air, we have to trust that. No matter what, even when your engine is on fire, you're going to stay consistent with the procedures and protocols. Contracts, where trust meets action. Teams need trust in order to execute at the highest levels. But how do you build this high trust? Where does it come from? Trust functions like an invisible network that touches every person in an organization. But trust isn't a complete intangible. When you focus on developing trust, you focus on the tangible pieces, on the visible manifestations of trust. There are places where the flow of information and collaboration have the potential to increase and thereby elevate an entire organization. At these points, trust is visible. This is where it's formed, evaluated, measured, and where it can be accelerated. Contracts are one of these visible points where trust meets action. They are all around us. They bind our world together, and they are a part of the natural fabric of any team. They function as a tool for getting people on the same page. They are something to refer to when conflict, uncertainty, or unprecedented issues arise within the relationship. Contracts are the point where trust meets action. Many companies see contracts simply as written documents, letters of agreement, compliance documents, employment contracts, and so on. These are important, of course, but the contracts that underline an organization are more than documents that we sign. What we're examining here are the tangible interpersonal contracts that bind all teams and form the fabric of societies. If you look closely, the actions of any group are founded on multiple contracts, which include agreements that are direct and indirect, verbal and nonverbal. These countless agreements between coworkers inform the culture and identity of a team, which affects performance and results. They're often taken for granted, but the communicative network they create reaches every corner of the business. 
Whether explicit or implicit, these contracts act as silent sources of strength in all organizations. They're the reference points from which trust grows. Without solid, explicit, and implicit contracts, trust is not possible. While these kinds of contracts often go overlooked, acknowledging and improving such agreements can have substantial positive effects on your business and your life. Because these contracts are so common, already influencing the organization in ways you might not even realize, this is something you can improve upon without overhauling your operating procedures. This presents a prime opportunity to build trust. Simply turning your attention to how these agreements are working for you has the ability to elevate both individuals and teams. I believe these contracts can be broken down into two primary categories, both of which have the power to increase trust and thus elevate performance. Verbal contracts. Some of the most important contracts in a high-performance organization are spoken ones. These vocalized contracts are a promise that naturally increases accountability. It moves accountability to personal responsibility. On the Blue Angels, as we examine the new landscape of each air show during the brief, we were voicing explicit contracts to each other all the time. I'm going to be on time and on flight line, the exact moment when the boss makes the call. Vocalizing contracts are a promise that naturally increases accountability. It moves accountability to personal responsibility. These kinds of contracts are not superfluous. They allow us to maintain the standards of safety and performance we were committed to. Elite performers know their words carry not just meaning, but weight. There is a power in their words, which inspires excellence. The Blue Angels are a joking crew, no question. But we are very conscious of the role we've been given and the integrity hanging on our words. When it matters most, we make contracts with each other that allows us to reach for higher and higher levels of execution. Explicit contracts exist in every business and every team. I'll get it to you on time, and I'll follow up with you tomorrow. Our verbal contracts by saying them, it increases and clarifies my accountability. I'm increasing my commitment to get it done. My commitment is made public, and my fulfilling that contract reinforces trust in me. Each fulfillment implies it increases future reliability. Each contract fulfilled builds trust between individuals. By making and fulfilling contracts in this way, trust begins to grow. Strong communication builds a cadence where trust can flourish. As I mentioned before, small things matter. As Mother Teresa said, be faithful in the small things, because it is in them that your strength lies. Strong communication builds a cadence where trust can flourish. That's a basic example, but it relates to the higher levels of trust. The mechanism doesn't change when the contracts get deeper. I'll do whatever it takes, or you can count on me, or I've got your back. These are statements that gain incredible power when they are backed by trust. In business, we often make a contract to ourselves like, we'll put the client's interests first. While this kind of goal is often implied, when it is explicit and bought into by both parties, it becomes the foundation that gets you through tough times and also speeds up execution. As you can see, these kinds of contracts are very different from the standard written kind. Rather than being fail-safes against broken trust, they are inviting trust to be strengthened. They are offering something, creating an environment where trust can grow. This is what makes them so powerful. Each time these contracts are fulfilled, they reinforce the entire team's bond of trust. They create a stronger framework for other team members to offer similar contracts of their own. They are a pillar of the culture and the essence of elite companies. Nonverbal contracts. Implicit, unspoken contracts represent the next level of trust. On a team like the Blues, we made explicit verbal contracts with the team in every brief to be on time and on flight line, but we also operated on a deep-rooted set of contracts that were rarely verbalized. Our standards were incredibly high, and they functioned as a kind of silent agreement between teammates. The standards of the Blues were familiar to us. We had devoted our lives to upholding them. Their specificity was all around us, because we knew that small things done consistently would result in a greater impact. 
For example, when we suited up, we always carried two types of pens, one for signing autographs and one for taking notes. We kept them tucked into the upper left shoulder pocket of our flight suit in a precise order, with the note-taking pen first and the pen for autographs second. We maintained that kind of meticulous precision in all elements of our uniform and in all of our actions. As soon as we left the briefing room, we were 100% polished. Upholding all the small elements of these standards was so important, we created an interesting way to enforce them. Sometimes you would make a mistake, and some part of your uniform was out of parameters. If that happened, and you noticed it, it was your responsibility to bring it up in the debrief. We gave everyone the opportunity to notice it first themselves. But sometimes it was fun if someone else noticed it, and it still came up in the debrief. Each time this happened, it incurred a $5 fine. We took that money and used it to help pay for our wrap party at the end of the season. It never amounted to much because we corrected our mistakes pretty quickly, but it did raise our awareness and brought some joy to the process. It wasn't about the money, of course. It was about focusing our minds on precision every single day. Nonverbal contracts are often visible in teams with a strong strategic center point. On the Blues, upholding our higher purpose to be ambassadors of goodwill meant that we always showed up prepared and energized, whether for a flight or for a presentation for high school students. We never arrived at any event and said, today we're going to be ambassadors of goodwill. We all had made that contract at a deeper unspoken level. We knew that we represented not only the armed forces, but also the hopes and dreams of all the citizens of the United States and the world at large. A purpose larger than self allowed us to easily buy into and uphold the values and traditions that came before us. Those values still exist on the team today and continue to be passed down to the future. This is the mark of an excellent culture. Trust, contracts, and the DPF. Now that you have a clearer picture of how trust and contracts are related, let's contextualize this practice within a process. Contracts are a critical step in the cycle of the Diamond Performance Framework. Contracts are a point of commitment and buy-in that doesn't live in isolation. It is a living, breathing part of the DPF. Every brief should leave a team with a set of verbal and nonverbal contracts, commitments that set expectations and can be examined as a larger part of the process. These commitments can be made at any time, but they flow naturally when the team is gathered for the brief. These commitments will be addressed during the debrief to determine where we fell short of expectations, where we exceeded them, and where the commitments themselves could have been stronger. When the process resets, these commitments pass through the step of elevating beliefs, allowing individuals to enter the brief with new expectations and trust, forming stronger bonds that can again be debriefed, and as the cycle continues, create an upward spiral of continuous improvement. In the accompanying PDF diagram, you will see trust as the third facet to the Diamond Performance Framework. Competency, commitment, consistency. When you bring awareness to the power of these contracts, they can be made and engaged with throughout the day. As awareness grows, individuals begin to see this vehicle as a way to increase communication. In this mindset, it's worth that quick phone call or a text or popping into someone's office to solidify communication and thus to build trust. In the same way that writing something down can increase the likelihood that we'll remember it, vocalizing our intentions can make us more likely to execute on our actions. When you're practicing this at the highest levels, you eventually reach a point where people understand expectations and actions without speaking. By applying these techniques, Thumper and I got to the state where we needed very little radio communication. That's how much we trusted each other. We knew what the other person would do and how they would react in a given situation. Your working relationship becomes nonverbal, but you understand it concretely. When you reach predictability, when you can trust inherently without thinking in the actions and character of yourself and those around you, true high performance becomes possible.